Hey there, Nancy Drew Clue Crew. I'm Mora, and welcome to another video walkthrough of the Nancy Drew game series. Today, I'm playing Ransom of the Seven Ships, the 20th game in the series. It's the first game to feature the physical appearance of both Bess and George, probably requested by fans, and it takes place in the Bahamas. Hi, I'm Nancy Drew. This is my center of operations, my desk. Go ahead and poke around. If you want to know the particulars of how I do what I do, take a look at the book titled How to Be a Detective. It's real helpful, especially if you're new to the mystery solving business. And be sure to check out my scrapbook. I put memorabilia from all my past cases in there. A lot of them were pretty dangerous and at times really scary. But don't say anything about that to my dad, okay? He worries about me enough as it is. And whatever you do, read what's in the file called Case Files. That'll tell you all about the mystery I'm about to try to solve. If you think you're ready to dive into that mystery, just click on the plane ticket and you'll be on your way. Leave it to best to enter an online sweepstakes and wind up winning a five-day vacation in the Bahamas. Naturally, she invited her cousin George and me to go with her, and naturally we said yes. As luck would have it, Dad and I have to go to a father-daughter banquet on the day the vacation begins, which means I'm going to have to arrive a day late. But the ecotourism resort where we're staying sounds very cool. And the island is so remote you can only get there by float plane. White sand beaches, turquoise waters, and tropical sunshine. Here we come. All right, so now I'm going to click on the plane ticket. And, of course, I'm going with Junior Detective. And uh, unlike all other times when Nancy travels out of the U.S., uh, it's like to Europe, it's uh, instead of going to the right, it's going... Uh, east, it's going to the south. We're going south of the continent to the Bahamas. There it is. Red Isle. It looks so small. It'd take you a while to get anywhere down there on foot, I can tell you that. Unless you're super athletic. How often do you fly charters out here? Your two friends, the ones I flew out here yesterday, they were my first passengers in weeks. Pretty isolated, huh? Granted, a lot of these places shut down during the summer on account of hurricanes. But even when it's not storm season, I guarantee you, that island down there is pretty much a ghost town. So now we've arrived. And here's George. Here's George. Hi, slow down. I'm not going anywhere. Hey, hey, hold on. George? Stop. No, don't go. Stop. No, come back. Come back. George? What's wrong? What are you doing? I was trying to stop him. We need help. Why? What's happened? Bess has been kidnapped. And when I woke up this morning, Bess's bed hadn't been slept in and there was no sign of her. She never came back from going to watch the sunset. Here's the note the Gibsons left. I knew I should have gone with her, but I was just so tired. This is all my fault. It is not your fault, George. The Gibsons. They're the people who own the resort? Yes, but there's no sign of them either. And here, here's the note I found from the kidnappers. They obviously knew you were coming. It sure looks that way. Wonder who El Toro is? He was the Spanish captain of a fleet of seven ships that sank near Dread Isle about 300 years ago. There's something about him in those books over there. Have you seen anyone else on the island at all? No, but then we really didn't have time to explore yesterday because we arrived so late. And I've been in here ever since I found that ransom note. I've been trying to get this satellite phone to work so we can call for help. So far, no luck. I feel so useless. You can do it, George. Just keep at it. In the meantime, I'm going to look around. Maybe go out to this Sangre Beach place. Bess took the only golf cart that worked. That one that's still here needs water or something. Anyway, keep me posted. All right, so Bess has been kidnapped, and we've got to find El Toro's treasure to get her back. So here's a map of Dread Isle, and it would be easier if I had this in my inventory because it's so much to remember. Uh, this closet has a pretty sophisticated lock on it, probably to keep out nosy guests. <laughs> oh, no offense. Uh, yeah, Nancy knows best when it comes to being nosy, so... What I have to do is turn all of the squares so they're dark green to open it. So I'm pressing a sequence that can allow me to do that.
All right. And here I found some walkie talkies. Hey, I found some walkie talkies. We should carry one with us at all times. That way we'll always be in touch. Here. Thanks. Good idea. And here's some scuba diving gear. Yes, I'm going to need to scuba gear might come be exploring in. that I way. I'm up to date on my diving certification. There's a map in here. That's weird. What is? I saw the case in every spot that's marked on this map. You think the Gibsons have been keeping tabs on you? Kind of looks that way. Probably just a coincidence. Hmm, but is it? Well, let's see what else there is for me to see. Here's a... Uh, chart of the international nautical flags, the alphabet, which uh, flag for each letter and number. Um, gonna need to take this. Sunny June field research notes. Uh, Sunny June, again, set, been here before Nancy. Uh, we're gonna have to interact with the monkeys on this island, and here we have to listen to see what, know what they're saying. One of these, um, uh, one of these phrases we're going to need to know for something later. Something to do later. And we are going to learn about bats later on, too. That's why we need this bat seeker. Looks like this thing needs a battery. And it also it needs, like to needs to be put together. together. Here's book about El Toro. Uh, can't take it with me though. Um, we can also look at uh, parrot. Stranger danger! Stranger danger! Stay back! It's okay. My name's Nancy Drew. What's your name? Cuckoo's my name. Talking's my name. Cuckoo? Well, that's weird. You look just like Lulu from Curse of Blackmore Manor. That's weird. You look just like this bird I met in England named Lulu. Ah, so she's Lulu's granddaughter. Want a cracker? Want a cracker? So she she likes fruit. Her grandma likes cakes. Coco want fruit. Lulu want cake. Okay, it freaked out like that with me too. Probably tired of eating bird seed. Coco want fruit. You've made that painfully clear. I'll see what I can do. That was cute. Coco want fruit. All right, so this golf cart doesn't work because it needs to be filled up with distilled water. The dispenser I need is right here in the shed, which is locked. Locked. Maybe the Gibsons kept the key at the front desk. Yes, and let's see if George has seen it. Have you got something? Yeah, the sneaking suspicion that this whole thing, the contest best one, the trip here, the note from the Gibsons... I think it was all just a big ploy to capture one or both of you so someone could force me to find this treasure for them. That's so diabolical. It is. Who would do who, something like but that? But who is it? Someone who knows I like to solve mysteries, maybe? Great. That narrows it down to what? Everyone who reads the newspaper? Nancy, you've solved mysteries in practically every corner of the world. <sighs> You're right. The only way we're going to find out who it is... Is, is by, by finding, finding Bess. Bess. No problem. I need a 9-volt battery. Have you come across any? I'll keep my eyes open, but you may be out of luck. Have you by any chance seen the key to the shed outside? I've seen a key. I'm not sure if it's the key. Here, try it and see if it works. Okay, Thanks. yeah, it is the one. Anything else? No problem. I'll see you later. Keep me posted. Okay, here's the shovel we'll need when we dig out at Shark Cove to find the item that's been buried for us. Here's the dispenser I need for the golf cart and Must be where they store the, the sales. sales. And according to the flags here that translate to numbers, the combination to open this is seven, nine, two, zero, four. So I'll take a sale, but I'm not gonna use it right away. So now 
Let me put in the dispenser. Okay. These two are already filled up with 100 mils of distilled water, and they all need to be. So I've got to open these up and push the buttons to fill them up. Okay, so that fills it up. Now I'm going to close this one, push another button, fill up those two, do the same thing. Okay, now I'm going to close this. Uh, push that button to fill those up, 200 mils. Close them. Open this one, and I should be good to go. That should do it. Now, I'm going to drive out to Shark Cove. It's right here. Oh, it looks like a shark fin. No wonder it's called that. Although there's probably sharks swimming within the cove. Okay, so now let me look at the instructions here. Uh, follow the 15 men to dead man's chest. Okay, so this tells me that where each object that I'll be, I have to... That has um, objects with things on it like three coconuts or three frongs or three palm trees. I multiply that by the number to... By, it he, by that next to it and I go in the op its opposite direction, but first I have to find the starting point, and that, it says a W, so I have to find two palm trees next to each other that, cr that um, look like a W. And there it is, bottom right. Okay, so, here's how I start. So this is the first object, Direction, so I have to start in the middle, go three paces south. One, two, three. Now I'm at three coconuts, and that's object two. Multiply by one, I go west three paces. One, two, three. Okay, now I'm at three fronds. Multiply by three, I go north nine paces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I'm at three palm trees times three, I go west nine paces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, now I'm at two coconuts uh, times one. I go north two paces. One, two. Now I'm at a rock multiplied by three, west three paces. One, two, three. Three fronds Multiply by five, I go south 15 paces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, now I'm at four fronds. Multiply by one, I go west four paces. One, two, three, four. Two coconuts times three, south six paces. One, two, three, four, five, six. Four fronds multiplied by three, east 12 paces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Okay, so now I'm at five fronds. I go north five paces because I multiply that five fronds multiply by one. One, two, three, four, five. Three rocks multiply by two, east six paces. One, two, three, four, five, six. Four rocks times one, south four paces. One, two, three, four. Four coconuts multiply by two, east eight paces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is my last object, two coconuts times one, north two paces. One, two. And now that I'm here, uh, if I see this hand icon, it means I can dig. So I'll right click and dig. All right, and what it gives me is El Toro's journal, which needs some major decoding. Now I know what it translates to, but you just, what you do is just type in the letters that you think they might be, and it's I'd recommend filling in two, three le lettered words first because when you type in what you think they are, the le letters will fill out in other places because you can see like uh, those symbols and I know what this is but I'll 
go ahead and start. All right, in the black of night with hurricane winds wailing and giant waves pounding, I ordered my fleet to change course and, course and make for land. But with this island in sight, the Caridad foundered and disappeared into the sea while the Castidad was set ablaze when lightning ignited her sails and sank amid the smoke and flames. The remaining five ships managed to reach the island where we dropped anchor and waited out the tempest. Okay, that's one page decoded. Now let's... I'll do the next one. All right, the light of dawn revealed catastrophic damage. Only a third of my men survive. Worse, not one of my ships is salvageable. None shall ever sail again. We are shipwrecked. The only hope we have of ever leaving this accursed place is to seen by a, be seen by a passing ship, Let, lest it be a pirate ship. I have undertaken to hide our cargo. As a loyal servant of the king, it is my duty. Okay, here's the last... Page. Uh, seven ships set sail, and so seven pieces shall open the seal. I have tasked each. surviving ships crew with hiding a single item its location known only to them and to me securing the treasure itself shall be my task alone I write in English so that no one here with me will know how to find it in this manner any attempt to force the location of the treasure from my men will be fruitless. Okay. These sections are still encoded, and in a very weird way. Maybe yes. I should keep see, my eyes peeled for see, something that will help me break encoded it. from its can't make out what that is. So we need to find something that'll help with that. Uh, Carry Dad, one nautical mile due southeast of this isle. An iron chest buried under a raging sea. Its color. In colorful 9x9, nine nine, no colors do repeat in any group. Um, so I'm going to have to seek out the Caridad shipwreck. But before I do that, let's drive out to Sangre Beach, because that's where Bess was going. And apparently might have been there when she disappeared. That's the other golf cor cart. Ugh. I'm so used to hearing golf carts. I say yes. that instead of golf cart. It's what it should be. In well, are those Nancy's footprints? Are those Bess's footprints? Where are they coming from? <gasps> Is that her sandal? Whoa! Oh my. Who, who are you? Who the heck are you? Um, my name's Nancy Drew. What are you doing here? I'm looking for someone. Oh. A friend, Bess Marvin. She disappeared last night. There is no Bess Marvin here. Look, do you think you can let me down? 
It'd be a whole lot easier to talk if the blood weren't rushing to my head. Hey, I know that feeling. I hate being upside down. Yeah, you wouldn't. Ow! I, Sorry. I don't. I've never been upside down long enough to get dizzy, but I don't want to try it. The cart she was driving. Are you sure you didn't see the people who kidnapped my friend? I was fishing last night, far down the beach. I see no kidnappers. I hear no kidnappers. Didn't you look around after you saw her golf cart? I do not see this cart until just now. Really? Have you noticed any footprints or car tracks? Anything out of the ordinary? You ask too many questions. My name is Johnny Roll. I am from Kingston, Jamaica. I have come here to fish and to be alone. When I'm tired of fishing and being alone on this island, I will go to another. That is my story. There is no more to say. What are you mm -hmm. doing, by the way? I am repairing the motor of my boat. The monkeys on the island like to steal things. What they cannot steal, they destroy. One day I find them in my boat, tearing up whatever they can. As I am chasing them away, one bites me. Aye. These monkeys are dangerous. They have ruined the motor of my boat. I cannot go anywhere until it is fixed. That is why I set this snare to catch them before they do more damage. Why do you ask all these questions? I just thought you might need help. I do not need your help. There are other people on the island as well. There are? Where are they? Who are they? Tell me everything you know. I only see them sometimes when I am fishing. Always from a distance, moving through the trees. Three, maybe four men. They do not bother me, I do not bother them. But if this changes, as you saw, I am ready for them. What about a phone or a two-way radio? Do you have one? I have none of these things. You go now. I can tell you nothing more, nor can I help you. I'll go, but I'll be back. You can pretty much count on it. Do as you like. Well, George hasn't seen, doesn't have a battery. Let's see if he ha might have one. You are fortunate that I am a patient man. Uh huh. Would you by any chance have a nine volt battery that I could have? I do, but if you want it, you must iron it. Uh, there's While always a catch. From my boat, I lost a beacon, which I must have to navigate. I am pretty sure it became snagged on some rocks as I passed by and was pulled off. By the time I realized it was missing, the monkeys had damaged my boat, and I could not go back out. And so you must retrieve it for me. Sail directly northwest from this beach until you see the two sharp rocks. If you sail between them, you are sure to find my beacon. I can do that. Then the battery will soon be yours. And off I go. So take my first sailing trip. Well, the sands are pink. Uh, I've seen, I've heard of white sand, but is is it possible for sand to be pink? I I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna need to do sailing several times. I was hoping to save a trip, but uh, um. All right, so let me get the sail from here. So he said northwest of the island. Okay. Okay, you want to make sure, like, there, so there's a meter here because if you hit things you shouldn't be hitting, you're, it'll drop, and I guess Nancy could drown. Uh, ooh, avoid kill, killer whales or orcas, as I prefer to call them, sharks. Um, well, this is optional message in a bottle. It's not pivotal to the game. It's, uh, it's for an Easter egg, and I'll make that in a future video. Uh... Okay, two sharp rocks. Here it is. All right, it just didn't take any time at all. Don't hit the rocks either. Um, there are also some flo yellow floating items that you don't want to hit either, because otherwise hitting those sharks or killer whales, it'll bring the meter down. Well, you know what? Maybe I should... Maybe I should... Yeah, you don't want to hit that object is what I'm talking about. Don't hit... Now, I guess using the arrow keys is better than using the mouse for steering. All right.
Let's see if I can ask him for his metal detector, because I'm going to need it to find the iron chest around the carry dad. I, I mean, I have to sail, uh, what is it, north, southeast, as the journal said, and look for the carry dad shipwreck, but I need the metal detector, because I'm looking for an iron chest. So I'll give him his beacon, but let's ask if we can borrow his metal detector as well. What is it now? I retrieved your beacon for you. Here you go. And here is your battery. Thank you. That is all. Oh, guess I can't ask so him yet. So all you do here is fish? Sometimes at low tide, I walk the beach with a metal detector, searching for that which the sea has left behind. Ever find anything valuable? One day I find this. I do not know what it is. Actually, it looks. I know what it is. Familiar, it's I a key. One of the keys to the doors. Must be very um, rare. the. D and rare things are very valuable. Guess I'll be going. Key to the door. The, to the treasure in Secret of Shadow Ranch. Um, okay, I'm looking at Sonny's research notes. It's about the monkeys. You can play games with them to win things. I wonder if... You are fortunate that I am a patient man. Uh, Sorry, I'll be going now. Well, let me drive around to some of the other locations I can go to. I think, oh, isn't that one of the uh, blue hole? I think that was, mm, no, there's no rule saying you can't drive on the road. Okay, I just want to make sure I actually look in the journal. Not sure if I did before, after I decoded it. A pulley's missing. Some kind of animal ran off with one of those pulleys. Looks like whatever it was has an extra toe. A monkey. Uh, we're engaging in too much monkey business, you know? Hmm. Well, yeah, I, I thought I would be able to get the metal detector, but, well, because we need it, but maybe because I hadn't looked at the journal thoroughly or Sonny's uh, notes, maybe that'll change. What is it now? Here we go. Would it be okay if I borrowed your metal detector? No, my boat and my metal detector, they are my only true possessions. And unlike my boat, my metal detector is not broken. I give it to no one. Please, Mr. Roll, it's very important. My friend's life may depend on it. I won't break it, I promise. You ask me a question, <coughs> I'll give you my answer. Now you may leave. Uh -uh. Not without that metal detector. I'm afraid I'm just going to have to bug you until you give it to me. Sorry. Here is what I will do. I will give you the metal detector. But first... You must give me the compass which the monkey with the notched ear stole from my boat. Do you agree? You've got a deal. I'll be back with that compass in no time. I hope. <laughs> yeah, you can only hope. All right, so Sangre Beach, the monkey center, which is where the monkeys are, where you can play games with them, is farther north. Okay, right here is bad sea, but I don't need... No, don't want to go there just yet. That'll be later. And I want to go to... I went to Blue Hole for the reason being that... Um, uh, um, reason being that I wanted to 
ha have two reasons to go here. I need to play a game with the monkey with the notched ear, which according to Sonny's notes, it's this one, playing a coconut throwing game. The monkey with the extra toe that took the pulley is this one. You can uh, see it looks like, yeah, uh, I think the extra toe's right there. I would like to play a game with you. Okay, now this game involves two colors. Each one of us has two colors. We have to fill up the square by selecting different parts. Uh, the, the bigger the part, the better. The better chance you have of staying ahead and winning. So that took me almost 50 points. Uh, let's go with this one. Ooh, I could have... That could have been a good selection. Let's try that again. Now I go. I guess that was the trick. I had to pick this one next. See when I pick the we pick the colors if wherever we pick them in the square they and they touch each other like we can't then pick other spaces that could have be touching our colors. Okay, so I'm gonna have to play again because I need to take this dial, but first I'm gonna take the pulley. Yeah, it's I knew I could have won that the first time, but mistake is a mistake and yeah, but playing again might be harder to win. I would like to play a game, would you? Oh boy. Because see, the more, just the more that they fill up, the better your chances are of staying ahead and winning by the end. Uh -oh. Your move. Well, I'm gonna go back and try again. I would like to play a game, would you? Uh, here we go again. That looks like it could take up a lot. So what I'm saying is that Whatever colors we do, we have to then pick blank spaces where they're not touching our colors. So I have to pick ones that aren't touching my purple or green. Like, depending on what my color is. Purple and green could touch each other, that looks perfect. but not others. Uh... Here 
Uh, like green cannot touch green or purple cannot touch purple on my part. Uh, oh boy. That's good. So basically it wins when none of us can then touch other, the rest. Uh, well, that was good for me. Uh, so, well, uh, I guess that'd be good. put me ahead a little bit. Oh. All right. Looks like I'm going to win. Let's see. Can't go there. All right. So now I'll take that. And now I'll play with this one. This is the notch to ear monkey. Play the coconut throwing game. I would like to play a game, would you? And here's his compass. Okay, so the point of that game was um, you have to hit the with the coconuts those pictures, but each one is worth a certain number of points. Uh, lizard is only one point, shells are two points, starfish is three, crab is four, guava is five. So you really want to hit the crab and guavas only if you want to win. So, I won. Now I can give him his compass, and then I can take the metal detector. back at the resort, but I don't want to be there. just want to drive back to Sangre Beach.
do you have my compass? There you go. Still works and everything. Very good. You may take my metal detector, but tomorrow you must return it to me. That is all. That's all okay. I wanted to ask. He doesn't give it to me, so I gotta make sure I grab it. Because I forgot it the first time I went out to the Carry Dad shipwreck, and I hated that I had to then drive all the way, sail, park the boat, and then come all the way back here. Big waste of time. Okay. All right, so I've got a full tank of air, so go ahead. And let's see, uh, southeast, I have to sail southeast to the shipwreck. I mean, this shipwreck is located southeast. Okay, you wanna just remember, avoid the rocks, killer whales, those yellow things, yeah, I don't know what they are. Buoys, perhaps? Channel markers? I really don't know. Uh, of course, southeast. I have to... I'm as south as they come, so I just have to go east. Uh, yeah, there's another message in a bottle. All right, so I guess I'm as south as I can. I've gone far south enough. Now I keep going east to find... Ugh, see, this is why I, I hate about this game. I'm easy to get lost. Okay, here it is. Uh... Guess these are instructions for sailing. Okay, now I've got the metal detector. Uh, oh look, there's something. There it says something in there. Uh. Uh. Well, can I not stop here? Uh. Well, there's see that um there's brain coral there with sea urchins okay this isn't where I this it's not where I want to be is this it right here okay the chest carry dad okay so has the journal said a colorful 9x9, nine nine, no colors do repeat in any group, column, or row. So this is a Sudoku-like puzzle. Um, and I want to try to fill it up before this goes down to zero, so I'm going to work at that. Okay, I used the last of it. Now I'm going to number two.
Okay, I'm gonna hurry. Uh Alright, this is an astrolabe and another dial. The astrolabe will help me um, decode the rest of the journal. I gotta hurry. And when I get back to the resort, I'm gonna refill the tank back up to 100. Okay, so my boat's right here. Can I go back down, though, to the brain coral? It said something that the... Um, well, I guess I'll have to come back. Oh, it's just frustrating to know when I can get out of there. Um... At the resort, it said that the brain corals are where you can find sea urchins, which are balls for monkeys. Maybe that'll be useful later on, but I couldn't seem to park there. All right, now that I'm back on land, let's uh, look at this. Okay, this uh, gives me like a set of one or two letters to decode the rest of the journal. Now let me see if then I... <sighs> let me try again. Uh... Okay, had to click on the pages with the code words. Okay, uh, so the fill in Okay, so I have to pick from there. Gargantuan. And Gan Alright, befriended one of the families of bats that call this island home. Their gargantuan ears and winged antics provide much needed laughter for my men as the creatures devour the insects attracted to our lanterns. The cave which they call home has become a safe haven to us. Explore the interior of the isle searching for supplies from its... Let's see... Oh, uh... Hi... Yes... Oh, I, for its highest point, found a view most worthy, half a fathom tall. Okay, so it goes up to three liters. The astrolabe.
guides the way to a flying dove and a watery grave. Discovered a bounty of seafood at Half Moon Reef. Divers swim down to the secret entombed. Be hind death to form a perfect square times three three create four four makes five then they return to the surface prize in hand okay I'm sorry I put in uh, wrong letters uh, challenge issued today by Jer Generis Sadad's cabin boy Manuel to helmsman Andres for ownership of a hammock which washed the shore, pointing to two three hundred ki kilograms rocks. Manuel proposed that whoever lifted one of them first would win. Andres, the stronger by far, quickly accepted. He had not yet budged his rock when Manuel, having used six loops of a 50 foot rope over pulleys raised his with ease and walked off with the hammock his, the hammock more losses at the blue hole When a group of men dove and lost their bearings, danger, heed this warning, death awaits all who enter these caves unprepared. Poisonous guardians of the deep strike with no warning, stay away, only those who follow. The signs will find their way. All decoded. I've seen a metal rod that height. The one Cuckoo the parrot is perched on. Well, let's ask Cuckoo if we can borrow it. Huh. I found that bowl of guavas, but if you give one to that parrot, stand back. She loves them. So I'll take them. And, uh, well, before I talk to Cuckoo, let me refill my. Scuba gear. A nice supply the air of tank. Does come in handy. I'd better take this air tank with me. That's it, girl! That's it, girl! Hi, Cuckoo. Wow, what an elaborate perch. Cuckoo, ah, perch. Wanna see a trick? Sure. Sure. A trick for a treat, a trick for a treat. Quick, bro, bro. Crack. And by treat, you mean... Bro! Cuckoo wants bro! Okay, okay, I get the picture. Just so we're clear, if I give you some fruit, you'll do a trick? You got it, sister. That's a really so we'll interesting talk to her about the perch. perch you got there, Cuckoo. Nice perch, nice perch. Cuckoo, ah, perch. Yeah, well, the thing is, I kind of need it. Look, how about I trade you that perch for an even nicer one? Treat for trade, treat for trade. Cuckoo on fruit. Oh, of course. <sighs> Why am I not surprised? I've got a treat here. Now, what kind of new perch would you like? Treat first, treat first. So you just click on that to put it in. Cuckoo on driftwood. You want a you piece want a of piece driftwood, of for, driftwood a for a perch? Driftwood for a perch. Driftwood for a perch. Driftwood for a perch. Now, before I go into that, let's uh, give her a guava so for a I have trick. A guava here. So how about a trick? If you don't make me regret this. Yeah, please don't make me regret it. If you watch all of Cuckoo's treats, you'll get an award. Cuckoo's tricks, I mean. You'll get an award. So Sweet! Prepare to be amazed! Oh. Very good! Yeah, she Keep did. your heart out, mystical! Yeah, she did a little dance for me. Alright. So... Let's uh, drive out to a location and find her a 
uh, a driftwood perch. Let's see if Shark Cove might have one. That's not nice, Coco. Here you go. A nice new driftwood perch. Not right! Not right! Uh, what's wrong with it? Three branches! Coco wants perch with three branches! Okay. Okay, so the first time you bring her a perch, she's not going to be happy with it, so it's, uh, I'll see what but I then do. Coco want new perch. what she wants is always going to be I'm random. Go new perch. Bye -bye. She may want one with bark, without bark, or with a certain number of branches, or leaves, or no leaves. So, usually she, when I play this, she first objects to it having bark, but, uh... But since she didn't, uh, then I guess I can have a perch with... Is that with three branches? No, I don't think so. Oh, that's, uh, that's with, without bark, so, um, let's see. See if I can find one at Sangre Beach or Blue Hole. And so what her choices are, it's going to be random sin. Sometimes you may get it right the second time. You're never going to get it right the first time, but the second time you may or may not. I know it's frustrating, but just be patient. And you'll eventually get what she wants. So apparently since she objected, she just wants a perch with three branches and apparently bark is okay with her. So I got to find something like that. Um... Is there any... Uh, that has four branches, so... Uh, Uh, well, no, that's only got two. Well, let me go back to Shark Cove and give that to her, see what she thinks. Well, so let me pick it up and see if that's okay with her. Maybe I should have done that the first time. She doesn't like it. Because she'll say, like, Google, I love it. Not right, not right. So uh, she hangs up. Why uh, not? She blew a raspberry no at me. Google wants perch with no leaves. <sighs> no leaves. So you want bark and no leaves. No, oh, so. Well, maybe there's one at Blue Hole. I'll see what I can do. Google wants no perch. Yeah, I like how she can blow a raspberry at me. Fine perch! Fine perch! Fine perch. Ah. 
<sighs> All right, let me. Okay, no leaves. Oh, but that's without bark. Well, I'll try it anyway, but while I'm here, um, let me put the, see if I can put the, no, that's not it. All right. Um, let's see, so th what this puzzle mentioned uh, in the uh, six loops of a 50-foot rope to raise a rock. Um, so we need to put one, two, three, four, five, six, and pull that. All right, another dial. Uh, so I got three so far. Uh, so I'll take this to her, but I have a feeling she won't like it since it doesn't have bark. I couldn't even tell the other had leaves when I first um, brought it to her. You, know, you don't know until you bring it to her. And... Uh, she doesn't like that either. Bark, bark, pooch, cuckoo, want perch with bark. Not right, not right. Uh, Why not? Bark, bark, bark. Cuckoo want perch oh. with bark. <sighs> so this has leaves too. I didn't even notice. Well, what's left? Oh, Shark Cove and Sangre Beach. Cuckoo want new perch. <laughs> Well, Cuckoo's Chelsea such now. a picky parrot, that's what she is. <sighs> All right, let me... Well, you know, when I take it to her, I don't notice something about it until later. Like, well, I can't tell if that has branches. Let me look. Sometimes what... Wait, that has... That has four branches. Well, let's try this one. Wait, am I going in the right... Yeah, you're being cute, huh? I have another perch for you. What do you think? Oh, oh finally. Hand it over, hand it over. Give me, give me, give me. 
I didn't oh, see right. the third okay. branch on it, but then again, when it seems like when I bring it to her, sometimes it's not what it seems to... Ah, see? I couldn't tell. It looked like it was just two before. Or sometimes... Or then sometimes, for example, one looks like it has bark, may not have bark, or vice versa. Yes, I recall that one from White Wolf of Ice School Creek with the food poisoning. And... The Phantom of Venice. And is that from uh, Danger by Design since it's in French? Pretty bird, pretty bird, pretty bird for the pretty bird. Oh, that was a puzzle I'm not, of which I'm not very fond. Well, ciao for now. Fine bass, fine bass. Ah, fine bass, fine bass. Yes, I will. In fact, let me check in with George now about how we I'm doing. We are definitely not alone on this island. Well, hopefully Bess is here somewhere. I've been hearing footsteps, like people creeping around outside. They're always gone by the time I go to look, but after a while, I'll hear them again, and it's starting to get to me. Maybe it's just monkeys or birds moving around in the grass or something. It's people, Nancy. Several people. Maybe it's the kidnappers. Look, even if it is, and you still don't know that for a fact, you can't let it stop you from working on that phone. Calling for help might be the only way we're going to get off this island. You're right. I'm acting like an idiot. From now on, no matter what I hear outside, I'm just going to ignore it and focus. Although if you could somehow make the noises stop, I'd really appreciate it. I drove out to Sangre Beach. Any sign of Bess? Well, I found her golf cart, empty, and I saw one of her shoes. And then I discovered that a fisherman named Johnny Roll is camping there. He's kind of a beach bum. He's also very paranoid. You found one of her shoes on the same beach as a paranoid beach bum? I don't like the sound of that. Does he know anything about Bess? He says he doesn't, but I'm not sure I believe him. I don't blame you. Some fisherman just happens to be camping on the very beach where Bess disappears? Yeah. That's too, way too, too much, much of a coincidence, coincidence for me. me. He says he's seen other people on the island. Unfriendly people. He could just be saying that to divert attention from himself. Agreed. Without even meeting this guy, I don't like him and I don't trust him. I think we... Okay, you should keep an eye on him. Have you talked to the parrot over there? Yeah, but it acts like it doesn't like me. Did you feed it anything? You mean you think it'd be nicer to me if I fed it? Probably. It'll do tricks if you feed it, I know that. Really? Maybe I'll try talking to it again. Did you know you can play games with the monkeys here on the island? I read that they were taught to play games. You've actually played a game with them? And won, although it wasn't easy. They even gave me a prize, which turned out to be something they'd pilfered. They steal things, huh? Wonder what human taught them that. Yeah, I'd I followed like to know. the directions on the kidnapper's note and dug up El Toro's old journal. So you know where the treasure is? Uh, not exactly, no. The journal doesn't give its precise location. After all, El Toro didn't want just anybody to find it, but I'm working on it. Anything else? I keep finding dials all over the place. Do you think they're important? I hope so, because despite, despite their cumbersomeness, you feel strangely compelled to collect them. You know, Nance, if this detective <laughs> stuff doesn't pan out, there may just be a career for you in trash collection. <laughs> Very funny, George. In order to follow the clues in El Toro's journal, I've had to do some scuba diving. Scuba diving? Are you nuts? With all the sharks around here? George, contrary to what the movies would have you believe, sharks rarely attack humans. Especially when they live in a healthy ecosystem like this, where they have lots of real fish to eat. But if I don't bother them, they're not going to bother me. Are you sure? Positive. Well, still... If a shark gets too close, you just pretend it's one of the kidnappers and punch it right in the nose. I'm pretty much convinced that Gibsons are the ones who kidnap Bess in order to get me to find that treasure for them. But why you? I mean, you don't even know them, do you? No, but they sure seem to know a lot about me. Frankly, at this point, I don't really care who kidnapped her. Getting her back in one piece, that's all that matters. I'd better get back to work. You know where to find me. All right, so um, according to the journal, um, as it said, uh, uh, about bats with gargantuan ears and love insects, 
insects. Um, according to the display I saw earlier, that is the Waterhouse's leaf nose bat, insectivorous, with a frequency of 16 kilometers per her kilometers hertz. I think that's how you say it. I'm a little rusty on terms like that. Like this thing needs a battery. Yeah, so let me put the battery in. I'll listen to Cuckoo chattering. Um, so I'm going to need to set it to 16. And now I have to drive out to Bat Steep and find the cave in which they're inhabiting. What's that? I haven't forgotten. You're keeping an eye on you. One false move and you'll never see your friend again. Ooh. Okay, so let's go to Bat Steep, and I can remember where it is. That doesn't have a, an exact parking space. You just pop, plop into the dirt, I think. Should be further north here. Ah, that's it right there. Okay, so I drive park here. Ugh, now this is a challenge I really hate. I have to climb up the mountain, and uh, while I do that, though, monkeys are going to be throwing rocks at me, and it's going to be a struggle to find the right cave because it's... <sighs> See? And there, yeah, I have that health meter. Uh, but luckily, going into a cave resets my meter. Um, let me see if... George, you there? Oh. Hey, Nancy, over. Sorry, I forgot the walkie-talkie was there, and that, that... I thought that was the... Over. Same here, but stay I in was, touch. You too. Over and out. I was pulling out the, uh... The bat seat. It meant to pull out the bat seeker, Nancy, not the walkie-talkie. Hey, George. What's going on there? Over. Anything to report, over? Nada, over. Okie dokie, over and out. <sighs> So let me try that again, uh, and pull out the Bat Seeker, check each of the caves. Okay, so it's static, it means it's not, this isn't the right one. This will light up when I've found the right cave. Oh, here I go. I think there's another cave up there. Yikes, yikes. Best to, when your meter gets, even if it's just a little bit, climb into a cave to reset it, just to avoid, because if if it gets ugh, low, then Nancy dies, and it's not a pretty sight. Um, so all the caves are supposed to be left, but whichever one it is that has the, that very bat species is random. I almost hit that again. No, nope, this ain't the one. And so this is a very dangerous uh, situation. I tell you, it's like these monkeys are ruthless. And I can't... I tell you, using my arrow keys maybe. <sighs> using the arrow keys as opposed to the mouse to move her around, I think helps a little. So I'll just climb into the cave, reset it, and try again. Whoop! I was just wanted to avoid that rock. I. Oh, there's another. So there's five caves total. Only one of them has those that bat species. Nope. 
you get an award if you check out all the caves. That, of course, that's not my, it could be my intention or not my an actionable intention because the caves, you know, which one is housing the correct bat I'm looking for is completely random. Uh, let me set, get into the cave to help her meter reset. Okay, maybe the other two caves are here. Maybe that's... Or did I miss one? Wait, I see some... No, that's... Okay. Darn it. Well, I actually saw bats flying around in this cave. Uh, uh. Oh, is this as far as I go? Okay, this has this is the last one. So I think since I've looked at all of the five caves now, I'll get an award at the end. Okay, this is it. Because now it's lighting up. Let's see. Ah, that's a very familiar image. It was part of the uh, key uh, uh, Secret of the Scarlet Hand of all the jade pieces to open up the monolith. So let me push it. Uh-oh. Well, that was a very dumb move. Well, that was kind of dumb. Uh, well, it looks like I have to move the beam of light over to the other side. I love a puzzle like this. Hello? Is someone out there? I guess not. All right. All right, another dial and Oh, this must be the signs that, um, signs that one of the last pages that El Toro mentioned in the journal, what, beware, of uh, this, the signs have a warning, something along those lines, uh-oh. What's wrong? Over. I'm trapped in a cave. <laughs> There's not much air in here. Over. Don't worry, I'll get you out. Just tell me where this cave is. Over. Take the road that bisects the island and turn right when the road ends. <laughs> and then turn right again when you see the big limestone monolith. I'm in the cave with a big rock in front of it. Over. Hang in there. I'm on my way. Over and out. Okay. Now it's automatically cut. She leaves it automatically cut to her being out there, but now I have to have George climb up and I've got to avoid the monkeys too, again. Damn. Ugh, pardon me. I told myself I would avoid cursing as much as I could in these games, but this game has so many hit and miss uh, random moments that could be fatal, and so it's hard to not slip out a few words. Now let me see if I can... Alright, let me just get to that cave up there to reset my meter. I think it's the cave farthest to the left that Nancy's in. It'll have the, the rock entrance in front of it, but it's about as far to the left as it could be. Uh, let me try that again. How I made it this far, I have no idea. Okay, it's not that one. But I'll get into it to reset the meter. Yep, 
Why did... So the cave... The... Okay, that's it. Right there. Oh, it's got skull and crossbones in front of it. Well, that's befitting. Nancy? Are you in there? Yes, I can hear you. I'm in here. Can you move the rock? It's blocking the entrance. Ugh, no way. This thing weighs a ton. It lowered into place and I pressed something. So there's got to be a way to make it go back up. Look around out there, okay? I found something. I'm not sure what. Can do it outdoors. You can do it, okay? Okay. Oh, great. It's a pu another puzzle. Yes. So what would life be without puzzles to keep us entertained? So some of these are held in place already, but others need to be put in place. <sighs> I have to put all these pieces together like they're still going to be mixed up but they'll form a slider puzzle eventually Oh, that's a bit of foreboding music here. Wait, they're still off. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, wait. Um. I'm getting 
in there, Nance. Okay. What started out as this a jigsaw, jigsaw puzzle, puzzle just now turned into a slider, slider puzzle. puzle. You can do it, George. Just keep at it. It's getting a little hard to breathe in here, so it probably wouldn't hurt to, you know, hurry. Okay. I'm gonna put these in order. All right. Nancy, I did it! George, just in time. Whoa, there's like no air in here. Tell me about it. Are you okay? I am now, thanks. Did you see anyone out there? No, just a bunch of delinquent monkeys. Why? I thought I heard someone. Look, I'll be fine. You should go back and keep working on that phone. I'll do that. You'll be happy to know I'm making progress. Keep in touch. And try being a little more careful. Uh, that's uh, advice Nancy needs most definitely needs to hear more often. Or Wait, there's. Something in here, uh... Okay, yeah. Well, well, looks like when it comes to Johnny Roll, things, things aren't, aren't quite... quite what they seem. No, indeed. Okay, so there's something else I need to do here at Bat Steep. From the highest point found a view most worthy. So I... Ugh. So I need to go to the top of the steep and use the the metal rod and astrolabe to locate the other islands. Now let's climb up to the cave to reset my meter. I think if I get up there. Ouch. 
don't want to fall and have a fatal accident, so just climb in here. Okay, it's not at this point, it's at on the other, if it's further down. Okay, so it's up there because that's the highest point. Okay, so it's up there that I need to be. But there are these monkeys guarding. Where? Get lost. Hey, come on, scram. Come on, guys. What's it going to take for you to move? Ah, they want something. Let's go back to the resort and see if we can translate. Well, actually, I could use that. I want to head down to the bottom. All right. I think right about here. Oh. Well, no, I thought I was heading back to the resort in that direction. Oh no, that's... I was going the wrong way. Uh, I'm thinking the monkey center. I was that I was at the monkey center rather than the bat steep. what those monkeys were asking for. A ball! So I have to go out to um, where the shipwreck, near where the shipwreck is and get a sea urchin. That'll get rid of them. And it just seems like it's not willing to ride with me. Well, okay, I found it faster than I did the first time. Right. So, I go here to the brain coral and get a sea urchin. Then I'll just go back. Why is it that my boat's right there? Why won't it let me? Well, just so to be on the safe side, I'll refill the air tank when I get back to the resort just so it's at total 100. And now that I think of it, let me go back to Blue Hole as well. Because, uh, 
El Toro's Journal mentions something to do there as well. Oh, well. Oh, so I can't because it doesn't need to be at 100. Well. that it does. I better take this air tank with me. No. No. Here I go, out climbing the ever so dangerous steep. Come on. Well, I'm gonna make sure I find everything I need to find using the astrolabe and the rod because I do not want to come back to this climbing this steep again. I'm not gonna. All right. Now get lost. All right. So this is where I put it. Bushes way across the island. All right, now I'm gonna look through this. There are two locations that are vital for this. Coordinates may differ, but the locations are always gonna be the same. It mentioned Dread Dove Isle and Half Moon Reef. That's what I need to look for. Hello, oh, Dove, Dove Isle. Isle. Okay, that's Dove Isle. Now I need Half Moon Reef. That must be Half mm -hmm. Moon Reef. Because, see, uh, as earlier I pointed out that you could find, you may just find these on while sailing, but you can't go to them until you need to know that you go to need to go to them so now if i tried to nothing would happen but now that i know exactly where they are then i can now i can go to them and yeah want to make sure anything else i need to see though just want to make sure i didn't Sometimes I'll see what looks like debris or even orcas floating. Yeah, just floating. Okay, I saw those two islands, though, or two point markers that I need to know for sure. Right, to go, need to go there. 
So I gotta make sure I find them using the astrolabe and rod before I go to them, because if I did without Matt Nancy mentioning them and having found them first, nothing will happen if I go. But before I do, let me see if I can go back to Blue Hole, because what did it say in the journal? Yeah, about after I lift, I lifted that up, but there's, I have to dive down into the, the actual spot, the sweat, the, dive down into the hole is what I mean. I guess I needed a full tank of air. I can't see a thing. Nope. Well, you know what? Maybe if I ask Johnny Roll or John Poole, whoever he is, if he's got a glow stick. Yeah, but this always comes with a price. An eye for an eye. It's a great joke I used, I think or would you like to use uh, in reference to Legend of the Crystal Skull with all those glass eyes. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I said this in that, but I want, did the glass eye keychain from Henry. I won't tell him what he, that he sold the goods to get s stuff for summer. It's an eye for an eye, Henry. What does it know? Do you think you could give me an underwater glow stick? I think I can do this, yes. There's a big if coming, There's isn't there? Coming, isn't there? If you program my GPS with the obstacles on this chart, I will not be able to navigate away from this island until this is done. Is there a reason why you don't program it? A very good reason, because you are here and you want the glow stick. And because if you do this, when I get to San Salvador Island, I will send the police to help you and your friend. All right. Yeah, well, that's how it is, an eye for an eye. I am beginning to like this relationship, Nancy Drew. All right. So. I know what they are, even though this doesn't state it. It only gives it for a couple, but let's see. Um, Half Moon Bay, 23, he's 57. Uh, West 7430. Right, so one saved, then Dread Isle. Okay, just four more to do. All 
right, one more, the Bermuda Triangle. <sighs> So it took me a while to figure all these out, but they're like all within, you know, 23 north, 23, 24 degrees and 73, 74, west, 73, 74. If you hit like one that's, if, uh, one, ones that don't exist, it'll say so. Try to hit enter, like even if you're off by a point with the coordinates, it'll like say this does not exist. What does it know? I finished programming your GPS. You'll be able to drive your boat away from here with no problem. You do fine work. Here is the glow stick. Thank you. Trollmeister again. That is all. All right, let's ask, who I are you really? Truth. Who are you really? I do not know what you mean. Mm hmm How come I found an ID that indicates you're Australian? Actually, never mind. All I really want to know is, where is Bess? I do not know where your friend is. That is the truth. This also is the truth. I'm not Jamaican. I'm from Australia. My real name's John Poole. Awesome. Now tell me something I don't know. I'm... Or at least I was an accountant. Only I discovered a bit too much about one of my dodgier clients. As a result, he sent some henchmen after me to make sure I never tell the authorities. So now, wherever I go in order to survive, I change my name and my appearance. How long has this been going on? Almost a year. We'll probably have to keep it up for at least two more. The guys who are after me, they're very smart and very determined. They'll stoop to anything, They'll stop at nothing. My only hope is to lie low, keep moving, and trust no one. It'd be nice if you could keep quiet about running into me. But if you can't, no worries. As soon as I fix this engine, old Johnny Poole will be history. The other people you've seen on the island, are they the ones who are after you? Not a chance. If they were, me, you, they'd have done us all in first thing. My enemies are ruthless. I'm guessing those people have got something to do with your missing friend. But if you think I'm going to help you find her, sorry, love. I've got my own problems. Guess I'll be going. I don't You're believe a back. word he says. Oh, that looks like the lizard from the colored lizards we followed in uh, Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. Uh, all right, um... So I'm going to go to those two locations, Half Moon Reef and Dove Isle. Ah, here it is. That's Half Moon Reef. It... Okay, I've got 99% on my oxygen tank, so I better use this wisely. 
Um, yeah, ooh, better avoid the jellyfish. So I'm diving down to, there are a couple of little caves here that have symbols on them. Ow. Like, oops. Ouch. Uh, like the sh uh, symbols that I got uh, from the bat cave. But there's only one I need that's truly important. And I'm going to take this with me, because, as you'll see in a moment, why I did. See, there's a couple of symbols. However, the one I'm looking for is this one. There's an octopus in there. And it won't leave. So that's why I got the conch shell to see if it would reach for it and thus get it out of the way. If I put it in too f close, it'll reach for it, but and it won't come out. So if I put it out far, it'll try reaching for it, and then it'll pop right out. Woo! Left behind a little ink trail. Uh, there it goes. Ugh. Okay, so this is part of the puzzle in El Turtle's Journal. It said, two form a perfect square times three, three create four, four makes five. So we make, with this one, make three squares with just two sticks. All right, and make four squares with the use of three sticks. And make five squares with four sticks. Another ant, another dial. Um, okay, getting back up can be problematic, not just because of the jellyfish, but if you go too fast, the uh, the pressure gauge will drop or will increase, and thus that could kill Nancy because she's going too fast. So it's best to swim like zigzag. Don't go straight up, or like don't do it at such a fast spe speed. Uh, wait till the jellyfish. Okay. See, did you see if you saw it just move? If it goes all the way up to the f far right and turns red, then you're in trouble. The Nancy will die. Okay, so now I'm gonna go find Dove Isle. That's not it, that's just a rock. No, 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 no. I uh, gotta go higher. Ooh, gotta watch out for the Yorkas. Uh, okay. As long as I'm going east, I know I'm... Uh, Is that it? I think that's it. Okay. What's that? Yeah, what's that? A little animal? I didn't. Uh, Tosha. Uh, Tosha. Oh, that, that's the galleon El Toro mentioned. The one that sank. All right. Um, uh, I need to... 
Now I need to know that's the one, the medallion in the shed. So. Uh. George, can you hear me? It's Nancy. Over. Where are you? Over. On a little island that's right across from the resort. Listen, I need to find out the date that a Spanish ship called the Atosha sank. I'm pretty sure there's a placard in the shed that has the date on it. So I need for you to go to the shed, look at the placard, then call me back with the date, okay? Over. I can do that. Whoa, what was that? What was what? Over. Are you outside? No, why? Over. And I think you may have a prowler. Maybe you should... Look, I'm on it. Over and out. Oops, I dropped a fork. I apologize for that noise. It's that, where's those monkeys? The golf cart's here. Great! Now if I feel like exploring, I can. Oh man, the monkeys must have broken into the shed. Uh-oh. Celebration they of the day stole the, the, med the medallion. Sand, which is inscribed on its front, this commemorative silver coin. Or the oh, coin, no. the medallion, Coins whatever gold. you call it. Those monkeys are not only vandals, they're also thieves. That's just peachy. Right. So now George is going to get her taste in playing a game with the monkeys. So... Okay, it's this monkey we have to play with. Now like oh, this is easier than the rest, but it could always be random because Nancy could easily lose. She's playing up against three other, or Nancy or George could be easily win lose because she's they're playing against three other monkeys. If you have a turn and uh, a monkey or Nancy lands on the same spot as another that they sent get sent back to start. If you land on this, you get sent back to start. It's best to try to just stay ahead if you can. Just don't give me a two or a four. Don't give me a one either. Don't give me a two or a one. Hmm. Well, that answered my wish, but now just give me anything but a one and I should be good. Please. All right, first time. Here it is. 6 September 1622. Bingo. George calling Nancy. Come in, Nancy. Over. Hey, George. Did you find out the date? Over. Yep. Mission accomplished. Fantastic. So tell me. According to the coin on that placard, the Atosha sank on the 6th of September 1622. George, you are awesome. I'll let you know if I need anything else. Over and out. Okay, so that's what I've got to do. Uh, fill in the date, set these dials to that date. Uh, but it, unfortunately, when I move some of these, then at least one other will move too. And not even at all. So let me step back, reset it, and...
right. What's that for? Well, I'll tell you shortly. Uh, so I'm gonna... Okay, nothing here for me to see, else for me to see. So now I'm gonna go back to the resort. I gotta fill up the air tank. Oh, now let me hope I can find my way back to the resort without getting lost on the sea. Oh, there it is. go back to Shark's Cove. Because for this, I need to find the parts of it around Shark Cove here. Um... places where the pieces will be could be completely random I could find well that's one thing I need but um, I need to find the missing parts and uh, what I also find in this area could be random metal objects there is something here though that best lost though as well that's not vital but I'm just going to look everywhere, spot I can find where the metal detector is light beeping. I think I'll get an award for doing that. Okay, that's one of the missing pieces. Yeah, it's just a random thing, but might as well just... Look everywhere when the metal detector starts beeping because even if it's worthless, you never know because everything's random where ever these random objects are placed. That's, That's Bess's bracelet. Bess's bracelet. Must have if you find it, Beach. if you find it, she'll mention it when you finally find her at the end. But I still need those pieces, so I'm just going everywhere where the metal de when the metal detector beeps. Now where's the okay? What's this? Is this a decomposed skeleton of some dead animal? Okay, that's not vital, but still. I'm just gonna search and search till I find them all, even if it takes me on a wild goose chase. Uh, okay. Nope, worthless, but still. I think it's missing two pieces. Uh, a, t a coin from uh, Le Haunting of Castle Molloy, the previous game. So yeah, I'm just going to keep searching, keep searching. Let's see, let me see. Um, okay, yeah, I need two more pieces. Two more pieces are miss pieces are still missing. Okay. Ugh, still worthless junk. Oh, 
Okay. Hopefully one of these is it. And then I need to just find the final piece. Yep. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, that should be the final piece. And now, the goal of this is to reproduce the owl by placing certain silhouettes of these discs over the center plates. So, to do that, I have to, let's see, uh, move, the, move the donkey, turn the camel once, and slide it, and then turn the dove three times, then slide it. One, two, three. All right, the f I think that's the final dial. And I need these for the puzzle I've got to do in the blue when I go to the blue hole. So I'm going to go there right now. All right, that's it right there. Okay, so before I use up any air, um, there are two pa main pads I need to take to get to the dial panel, and it's, uh, it ha has to do with these as well. Um, Danger, heed this warning. Death awaits all who enter these caves unprepared. Poisonous guardians of the deep strike with no warning. Uh, so I have to use these symbols will help me guide through the, the correct paths I need to take based on uh, they're matching the words from that part of the journal. So I'm going to go ahead and start. So I got to go this way. I think it's okay. I think I go this way. Alright, so I think this is the way to go.
Okay, this is the correct passageway. And what I have to do is place the dials according to this. The first rule, this is the first row. These spell out the uh, animals that need to be lined up here. Uh, hidden, not direct words, but still hidden here. Bee, ant, and donkeys. Okay, bee, donkey. And so then the second part, uh, owl, panther, and camel. Now I've got to turn them uh, so that their colors line up. Okay. Oh, and luckily there's another spare tank here. Okay, this is a puzzle that is like my worst enemy. Um, so, let me check the journal again. Oh, here's a key. Can't forget that. Okay, so in the journal, there are seven letters written in black. H, G, C, P, T, C, D. These refer to, those are the initials of the, the names on these hourglasses here. That's the sequence in which they have to be turned. And so you have three chances to do this right, otherwise it's game over. And you have to work them out so that the, all the sand falls at the same time. So using a little trick I learned, I'm going to do that, but give me a moment. I need to make sure I have this correct. Um, so it goes humilidad, generosad, castidad. Uh, wait, uh, Yeah, so the order is humilidad, sedad, castidad, paciencia, templanza, caridad, or I said castidad, I think after the third one is castidad. Caridad is the sixth. Diligencia. Okay. Just want to do this carefully because I don't want to have so many second chances over. But the point is, you got to turn all of them so the sand falls at exactly the same time.
All right. Yeah, I found out a trick of how to do that the right way, but I will, maybe someday I'll make a video explaining a way to do this easily so you don't have to uh, worry about it, having second, repeated second chances, but we are almost at the game, and that's the treasure. Looks like a but, very old map of the Western United States. But I can't take it with me. I can only take that map. Okay, so now I should be going to go to get out of here. Okay, uh, looking back at this. Oh, well, I think so. Well, that'll help. Oh, good. I never thought I'd be so happy to see the light of day. Uh, before I forget, uh, since I am almost at the very end of the game, but I want to show you a quick Easter egg I can get right in here, in this little spot. And then bada bing, bada boom. And I, like I plan to make walkthroughs with all the other games, I will be making a video of the Easter eggs in this game as well. I'm going to tell George what I found. So I'm going back to the resort. I don't need to dive anymore, so I'm not going to fill up the air tank for the last time. One more time. Nancy, you're here. This just showed up on the porch. <laughs> well, the good news is I found the treasure. It's a map. Yes, I knew you could do it. I knew it. So what's the bad news? I'm gonna have to deliver it to Johnny by myself. But, look, I still don't know if this guy's in on the kidnapping or not, but even if he's not, we could blow everything if you contradict these instructions and drive out there with me. No, listen, I could sneak ahead of you and hide. George, I'm not going to risk Bess's life over some map. But you can't expect me to just sit here. I have to go. I mean, what if something happens to you? What if I never see either of you again? I couldn't deal with that, Nancy. I just couldn't. George, I'm going to go, and when I come back, Bess will be with me. I promise. Okay. All right. So we are at the near end.
Now what? The people who kidnapped my friend, they want me to leave something with you. What is that? Some kind of treasure map. They intend to take it from you when they're sure the coast is clear. I don't want it. Get it out of here. It's not for you. It's for the kidnappers. Oh, no. Forget it. I don't want any part of this. I'm in enough trouble as it is. Look, it's no big deal. All they want is a map. You've got to do this. Please. Oh, crikey. And now that I've done everything you wanted, I want you to do something for me. Sure. What do you want? Just watch. Remember me now? Ah, now we're at the end. And of course he's the culprit, but... Gosh, you're... That guy from New York. You may not recognize him, I sure didn't. Dwayne Powers from Stay Tuned for Danger. What, she, do she doesn't, she doesn't remember his name? Dwayne, you idiot. Dwayne Powers. Well, it's a different voice actor. That's why I didn't recognize him for one reason. I thought you went to prison. I did. And since he's been revealed, that's why it's playing that sinister music again. You see, one of the men who worked at the Monkey Research Center here did volunteer work at the prison after he retired. We got to be friends. Good friends. So now he's explaining his motive for kidnapping Such Bess. Such good friends that he gave me a book the monkeys had found somewhere here on the island. He was sure it would lead to Sibylla, one of the fabled lost cities of gold. But he couldn't decode it, nor could I. And then it hit me. A way to find El Toro's treasure and get back at the teenage Snoop who ruined my life. <laughs> you ruined your own you life. El Toro's book on the beach, then lured us here, kidnapped Bess, and left me those directions so I could dig it up, decode it, and find the treasure for you. And those clues I found suggesting the Gibsons were the kidnappers, you planted them to throw me off track. Yes! It was all sheer genius! I was an up-and-coming actor before you came along. Did you know that? Yeah, I remember. No, I didn't. Well, Maddie I said so, but he gave up because he couldn't find work. What it takes. You fell for my performance hook, line, and sinker. Not only did I get you to find that map to Sibylla, well, but I he had claimed you that Rick had no real talent. And I had you believing there were mysterious other people on the island, didn't I? Unfortunately, there's nobody here but me. Heck, I even got you to help undo the damage those infernal monkeys did to my boat. I was brilliant! And I wasn't that brilliant, right, if you so ask you me. Brilliant. Now, where's Beth? She's very close, actually. Always has been. Yeah, of next course. Time, that was her shoe there. There is a next time. Watch upon whose toes you step, Nancy Drew. Watching where you step wouldn't hurt either. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Ugh. <laughs> This is what's known as the end of the line, Nancy. I was hoping to get all three of you down there, but your pal George lucked out. Oh well, gotta be flexible. No wait, stop! Come on, Dwayne, let's talk. I want to hear more. You know about about how smart you are for coming up with such an incredibly clever plan. Sorry, no time. I've got a tide to catch. Hope you're not afraid of the dark. Nope, I'm not myself either. Yeah. Nancy! Bess! Bess! Oh my gosh, I wasn't sure I'd ever see you again. Are you okay? Oh man, am I glad to see you. I mean, I'm not happy you got dumped down here too, but I'm real happy I'm not alone anymore. And now that you are down here, I'm really, really happy because I know you'll be able to get us out. And oh my gosh, you found my bracelet. That is so cool. And I sound like an absolute babbling idiot, don't I? Sort of. Just try to calm down. Are you okay? Well, I'm kind of thirsty, and I'm starving, of course. Oh, she and must be hungry. Just now, it was getting pretty stuffy in here, but otherwise I'm fine. And I found a way out. Look. <sighs> you can open it. Locked doors are your specialty. Yep, we'll use the key that I found by the hourglasses. But there's... Now, this is just optional, but there's one final step, uh, finding the treasure. First, El Toro, I presume? Take this key. What you do? Uh, I think it's though with this key to find a tre uh, act an actual the a hidden treasure around here. Put it in this this keyhole. Pa painting falls back. Now 
Um, so, of course, though, it's a puzzle. How do we know the combination? Well, it has to do with these symbols have to do with these paintings that are here in this room are also shown in the journal. Uh, the order, let's see, uh, it has to do with the symbols on these paintings, uh, the order, and you'll notice like on here, it, there's that symbol uh, with this bull, there's that symbol, there's on the bull painting, there's that symbol, and then uh, there's uh, on that fallen picture on the shield, or by the shield, I, hard to tell, yeah, right here. Uh, can't talk to Beth. She's too traumatized and tired to talk. talk later, Nan. Just get us out of here, okay? Yes, your voice sounds really shaky. So, so the order is the symbols on El Toro's portrait here. Uh, the bull picture, the armor, the bull head, and the fallen picture. But it's another puzzle, so what I have to do is... Put both keys in, turn it, and then have all these pressed down. So I press them one, two, four, five, and you get an award if you find this. This is just optional treasure. Treasure. Okay, then the last step I need to do is get us the heck out of here. Uh, I have not been able to completely comprehend it, but this has to do with it. Bronze is green, iron rust red, and these are the clues to determine what, uh, where you put the key. Um, uh, it's this key. But this is always going to be random, uh, so I can't give, tell you exactly which is the correct one. But there are possibility different possibilities, so I'm gonna <clears throat> work out one. Let's see. Uh, one option I have is to use the heart symbol keyhole uh, as a clue, and so, like I said, if I back away, this is gonna change. So there's no. If you do put it in the wrong keyhole, based on the don't f understand the clues and put it in the wrong keyhole, it's second chance. But I'm gonna do this one. I have the answer for this. Uh, following the uh, following clues possibilities uh, based on the heart shaped keyhole. So if, uh, for example, it's in the second column, second row, use the keyhole in the fourth column top. Worth column top row, so let's see if that works. All right, we're out of here. Nancy, you did it! Come on, Bess, let's get out of here. All right, the George must have gotten the satellite phone to work. The satellite phone to work. Both you guys are amazing. George, hey George. <laughs> 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 Not only had George called the float plane company, but she contacted the U.S. Coast Guard and the police in Nassau, San Juan, Miami, and Havana. She even called the FBI, but they put her on hold. Anyway, while Bess and George waited for the authorities, I talked the float plane pilot into taking me up so we could search for Dwayne from the air. We soon spotted his boat about three miles from shore and radioed it in. Now, when they boarded the boat, the police found it empty. Was the boat just a decoy? Did Dwayne meet up with someone and make his getaway in a boat I wouldn't recognize? Or did he, while gloating over the map, accidentally fall overboard and drown? Unfortunately, it doesn't look like anyone will ever know for sure. I, of course, turned the treasure chest Bess and I found over to the authorities. But almost immediately, the Bahamian and Spanish governments were at loggerheads arguing over which country had the legal right to claim the treasure as theirs. 
it soon became yet another mystery that may never be solved. As for the Gibsons, they'd been at a week-long family reunion in North Dakota and were mystified upon their return to find the resort overrun with police, government agents, and reporters. They didn't have a clue what had gone on in their absence. But they were happy about all the publicity Dwayne's escapade had generated and offered to let Bess, George, and me continue to stay on for a real free vacation. But we all said, no, thank you. The only thing that sounded good to any of us after what we just been through was good old boring home. I can imagine. All right. All right, uh, the answer to this, Trivia Tamer is 1987. Let's see how many awards I got. Oh, five. Nice. Now let's go to the preview for the next game, Warnings at Waverly Academy and the credits. Something sinister has been set loose at Waverly Academy. Someone known only as the Black Cat is terrorizing students, sending them strange notes, which are always followed by frightening accidents. The only way to unravel the mystery is to go undercover as a transfer student and enter the world of clicks and gossip that rules life at this exclusive all-girls boarding school. Help me uncover Waverly's centuries-old secrets and avoid becoming a black cat's next victim by joining me in my next adventure, Warnings at Waverly Academy. All right, so that's my walkthrough for Ransom of the Seven Ships. I can tell you... It is not my favorite one. Definitely one of my least favorite. These puzzles and how many times these puzzles are random or random if you can win the uh, figuring out to beat the monkeys at the games like the, the board game or the filling up the square with the different parts. I hated doing those. I learned how to figure them out from this on, but this just has so many complicated puzzles randomly like that hourglass puzzle as I said near the end uh, I'll make a video of that show it explaining a strategy to solve it but uh, I had to time myself with each hourglass how many seconds apart so that they would fall at the same time the sand would fall at the same time but I think the fact that there was only one suspect maybe is also why it's not it's been heavily criticized by fans I mean it had to be Johnny but I certainly did not expect it to be Dwayne Probably because it's a different voice actor. He didn't look the same as he did 10 years, nearly 10, 10 years earlier. Uh, uh, but at least I got to make a walkthrough of it. Glad, just glad it's over. I, and I have actually not played this, I think, more than from start to finish more than five times. So I haven't mastered it or memorized it, especially with the puzzles like the early preceding games. So I was worried it could take me up to three hours, if not more, but I got this a little over two and a half hours and I'm glad I did. So here it ends my walkthrough of Ransom of the Seven Ships. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this and I enjoyed playing it, but not as much as the others. And I'll see you in the next video and there are outtakes after this, but I'll make a video of that in the future. Okay, bye now.